Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures, and we're back with another big boxed lady. So, I put together quite a few of these action model girly kits, Mecha Musume, whatever you want to call them, and some are inherently better than others, and I gotta say, the MS General figures that I put together, uh, Shi Hao Dune here, was probably my favorite just in terms of the solidness of the model, the complexity, the, you know, variety of colors, just the overall quality of the model really impressed me. Not to say that all the other companies were pieces of garbage, not by any means, but I think I just really enjoyed that kit, and I thought, what the heck, why don't we try another one? And this is part of their Raider of Shadow sublines. You'll see there's a little bit of info here. It doesn't really make any sense. It's an official position set up by Cao Cao. It is said that members are commensurate with the name of the Earth Branch Zodiac. However, the relevant information is hardly recorded and the purpose is also ambiguous. No one knows where it is and what action it takes. Therefore, it is also named Shadow. Yeah. Alright, this is Cho Nu. And... You can tell by the way she's dressed. She is a blacksmith, and she's also a super dynamic action warrior. Well, actually, she's both, and that's one of the cool things about this kit, is much like the Eastern model ATK girl kits, at least the ones that I've built so far, you actually have all the parts necessarily necessary to build both the unarmored and armored version, and then... Her anvil, actually, when she's in blacksmith mode, switches over to her weapon when she goes into hero mode. I have not even removed the tape on this. I haven't even opened it up yet. As you can see here with her little anvil. And I don't know if that's a hammer or a pipe. Maybe it's both. Fairly good sized box. It's pretty big. So give me a sec. Let's pop it open. Get that tape torn. Get the mess on the table there. One of the cool things about these, you know, is basically you're paying two for the price of one. Fairly good size instruction booklet. So, part of her clothing, the unarmored version, is actually rubber, along with the polycast. So, that's an interesting touch. We've got a big piece of cardboard and cardstock with the QR code there. We've got a few various stickers, little talismans there. We've got a whole pile of decals. I don't know what those are for, probably the faces. Speaking of faces, we have four painted and two blanks. Okay, more of the clothes. They are rubber as well. Hard rubber. Probably wouldn't hurt to wash those. Give them a good scrub. Hair. Anvil. That's that's fairly large. I mean, these are fairly large figures anyway. Looks like more anvil bits. Soles of her feet. A couple translucent parts. Metal stuff. Huh. Those are the interiors. You can see there's a lot of nice color separation between all the parts. Clothes and armor. And finally, body parts. And I think that is everything. So while it's not the absolute excess of some of the more crazy, complex master grade kits, there's still a fair amount of stuff in here that's going to require building. Let's take a look at the instructions. I always enjoy flipping through the instructions. I'm weird like that. I apologize. Alright, Raider of Shadow. So, here you can see we've got kind of a glimpse of all the other characters that they are supposedly going to be bringing out. Uh, Bearing in mind that there are actually a few male figures that they have shown off early models for, at least at the time that I am filming this. So if you are uninterested in building heroic action girls, but you want the guys, it is coming. 
again, a lot of the same shots from the box art. More clear look at the armored version. Another big hammer. Nice breakdown of the parts list. Good to see that you have instructions and notes both in Chinese, Japanese, and in English, if you couldn't tell. And that is the case all across the instructions. So do not feel you know, overwhelmed if you want to try building a kit like this. It looks complex and it looks like a lot of stuff, but I mean, it it's pretty simple. I thought these were pretty straightforward. And one thing I actually really like, and this is quite appreciated, is when you build each section, they tell you exactly which runners of parts or the sprues that you're going to need for that section. I think that's a nice touch. I mean, usually, you know, you can tell where they're going to be and what you're going to need, but it is always appreciated. Oh, she does have, like, a welding mask. I thought that's what that was supposed to be. She had a gun? I didn't even notice a gun. Huh. Okay. Building that anvil. And then we get a sticker breakdown as to where everything needs to go. Overall, not too shabby, I gotta say. Alright, I'm gonna put her together. I am curious to see how she turns out in comparison to our Shi Dune over here as well. So, sit tight. Let's see how it goes. All right, folks, I hate to admit it, but it has been months with this kit uh, since I started building it. And the main reason is I ended up busting one of the important joints in the foot and the model just wouldn't stand up. It was quite traumatic. So I probably have shown off the basic mode of our blacksmith friend a few times on this channel, I think. Um, the joints on this version of her are a lot more simplistic. There's no upper thigh joint, for example. Um, you know, arms are pretty typical range of motion. Uh, I just, these tiny joints, I'm super, super hesitant to want to move them around too much. We have her actual anvil. We've got her hammer for banging on things. And I don't know where I put her pipe in some of the other fun little bits. There's the pipe. I'm like, I'm just going to get this video done because unfortunately that just, I, that soured on that and it was more my fault than anything else. Uh, as you can see, I haven't even bothered with most of the stickers yet. But it's a shame because the upgraded hero form of her is just really neat. I like the color choices that they use. Uh, it's different than the typical whites and blues that we see on a lot of these models. I like the red and black. Um, I mean, it looks more like a typical bad guy type thing. Um, I mean, the fact that she can actually hold a lot of these weapons, I haven't bothered trying to convert the anvil into a hammer in a while. Uh, you can see her lance here. It breaks down pretty easily, and it's got those metal parts. I didn't bother with the metal parts this time. Again, after breaking the joints, I'm just really hesitant to want to move her too much. Which is a shame, because overall, you know, the joint strength is pretty decent. I think it's more me busting it up was the issue than anything. That flag is really in the way in terms of filming, and it doesn't want to move. It's supposed to be like that. There we go. At the very least. I like the high-tech look of her armor, even though this is, you know, kind of very traditional, old-fashioned looking job. These MS General figures are quite large. Here is your typical 1-144th Gundam. Here is a Bandai 30-Minute Sister. Here is a Kotobukiya frame arms girl so you can still still see that these are quite a bit larger 
with another of the MS General Girls. I still think um, dollar for dollar, pound for pound, the Shi Hao Dune is a really cool model with that big old saber tooth tiger of hers. But this set I think is pretty neat. And I mean, MS General does have a bunch of new stuff coming out. Uh, so just my only real hesitation and suggestion is be careful with those joints. Uh, I probably have some more, but as you can see, she's standing up pretty solid. Uh, it was the left leg that I busted up. And I mean, there's all kinds of little, you know, transformation gimmicks with the weapons and junk. If you're into that kind of stuff, the fact that you do get the two figures there, you know, she's got like, I, I did think it was kind of cool the way they have the rubbery parts, uh, different types of plastics in use you know the overlapping pieces kind of different and different isn't always a bad thing you know, sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't let me show at the back she's got her cool little thrusters and stuff back here i mean there are some loose parts not any worse than the kotobukiya stuff in fact i'd say this is actually a bit more solid than most of the kotobukiya ladies that i have built at this point the fact that she can actually hold these weapons, that's a big plus. And you do get your typical slew of various arms and hands and things. I don't remember where this thing can go. It can turn into something. Anyway, if you want something different, if you're in the mood for a... I mean, it wasn't like the most difficult kit in terms of challenge. But there's a lot going on and there's a lot of parts to deal with. So if you don't mind that, if that's something that you are crazy like me and actually kind of enjoy, uh, I do recommend these MS General kits. Uh, they couldn't be a challenge. You do want to be careful with those joints. Um, but I think the payoff is pretty nice overall. So if you happen to come across them for a good price, I'd say absolutely take a look. And with that said, this has been High Lord Tamberlane with Obscurities and Miniatures saying thanks for watching and we'll see you back here soon. Bye-bye.